Hello, welcome to Polymer 101. We're going to talk about the basics of polymers, the types of plastics, and the fundamentals of polymer chemistry in this video. This is the first of a series of videos where we'll be talking about all these different types of an exciting chemistry used for a wide variety of different applications. Fundamentally, a polymer can be thought of as a chain. A single unit of chain is a monomer. This is just one single unit. The only feature to a monomer that matters is that a monomer can link together with other monomers to make long, continuous chains. These are the polymers that we use every day. The molecular weight of a polymer, then, is not just simply uh, similar to a small molecule where you add up the atoms. The molecular weight of a polymer is relevant to the length of the chain. So if you think of a monomer having a specific mass that we can measure, then a short chain would have a relatively low mass, and a longer chain would have a higher mass. Same way with the polymer, this is how polymer molecular weight is determined. Now, in practice, when a polymer is synthesized, typically there's a wide variety of different lengths of chain. They're all mixed together in a single batch. So we end up with what is called polydispersing. So you have a mixture of short chains, long chains, really short chains, really huge chains. These are all mixed together. So when we talk about a polymer molecular weight, we're really talking about an average molecular weight of all the different chains mixed together. And we'll get into that more into another video when we start talking about weighted number average versus weight average of determining polymer molecular weight. Um, so that's something we'll discuss later. But for right now, understand that a polymer's molecular weight is fundamentally the number of repeat units multiplied by the mass of a single repeat unit. That tells you the polymer's molecular weight. Polymers are all around you. Uh, you may not realize it, but polymers are used for manufacturing a wide variety of different materials from synthetic polymers, as well as there's a wide variety of natural polymers. Uh, for an example of a natural polymer is cellulose, which is a common component of plant life. For instance, this cactus, which has a bit of cellulose right here. Oh, okay, a little too much cellulose there for me. But cellulose is used in plant life. It is a repeating polysaccharide. It is a specific type of polymer, biopolymer. Uh, what's commonly used in the engineering field are synthetic polymers. These are used for a wide variety of engineered plastics. Uh, these are materials you encounter every day with your life. So, for example, we have polyethylene, or high-density polyethylene in this case. This is simply repeating units of hydrocarbons, carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, over and over and over again, forming very long chains. And this is what creates this plastic. This is used for a wide variety of different things, everything from plastic bags at a grocery store to plastic bottles to various manufactured pieces. Another popular kind is polyvinyl chloride used for pipes. This is the same type of chemistry except for it has an extra chlorine sticking off the side as a pendant unit. So this is a polyvinyl chloride used for a wide variety of different materials, engineering plastics, these kinds of things. Uh, additionally, there's polyacetyl, for example, Delrin. Uh, this is repeating carbon oxygen. So we have hydrogen carbon, oxygen, hydrocarbon, oxygen over and over and over again. You have long chains of that all mixed together. This is used for a lot of uh, impact resistant applications. It's a very mechanical, a strong polymer. Another um, polymer noted for its abrasion resistance, very resistant to any kind of physical damage, is nylon. This is a polyamide. So here we have hydrocarbon chains interspersed with carbonyls connected to amine units. So this is a very common polymer used for a wide variety of different applications, including clothing, uh, engineered plastics, these kinds of things. So these are all synthetic engineering plastic polymers. They uh, are pretty much every item you use today that's not made of wood or metal or glass is made of some kind of polymer. Although glass is a polymer in and of its own right, but more on that later. Uh, also, there are another two categories for polymers. So, it relates to how these chains interact with each other. 
Now you can have a pile of these chains just together where they're not necessarily connected with each other and that will form what is called a physically cross-linked polymer. A good example of that would be like the steel wool. Now this steel wool is not necessarily tied together inside, nor is it really uh, in any way connected, other than that it's just jumbled together so tightly that as I pull on it, it resists being pulled. Pull a little bit more, of course, and it stretches out. This is an important feature for uh, non-chemically cross-linked polymers. They have what's called creep. As you pull them, they start to stretch out. Best example is if you think about a grocery bag at your uh, store. When you pull the handles of the plastic bag when you pick up some groceries, you notice that the handle pulls out longer than what it was, and it stretches out really thin. That actually is the same process. You're just taking those polymer chains, just like I'm taking the steel wool, and you're pulling it out and you're deforming it so that it stays out thin like this. So that's a physically cross-linked polymer. The nice features behind the physically cross-linked polymers is you can remelt them and reuse them. Because in the melting process, you're just making these chains mobile again. You can simply uh, melt them or dissolve them into an organic solvent, for example, and then you can recast them or you can remold them into new shapes. So physically cross-linked polymers tend to be recyclable uh, as well as reprocessable. So you can take them and melt them into new shapes as you need to. Another category of polymer is chemically cross-linked polymers. These are polymers which have reacted such that the different monomer units are connected to each other. Uh, the best way to consider that with our chain example is if we had an instance where we had the chain connected. Uh, for example, here I have a three-way connection. Um, or you can have even more. You have your chains connect to each other. You can have a four-way connection for example. So these are ways in which the polymers can form chemical crosslinks. Uh, as a group, you can think of it kind of like this mesh. Now this mesh, as I pull on it, it doesn't go anywhere because every single piece of the strands are connected to each other. Because they're connected to each other, it's very strong, but the drawback is you can't really do much with it after it's been made. You cannot re-dissolve it in a solvent. You cannot melt it. In fact, it'll decompose before it melts. Um, you cannot really do much. After it's been formed, it's set, it's done. A good example of this for people who have done work with uh, painting floors, for example, is epoxy floor paint. So you have the two components, you mix them together, you put it out on the floor, and you've only got about an hour or two to do that before they set. Once they set, it's done. There's nothing you can do. That's a chemically cross-linked polymer. So what all does this mean? Well, we're going to be talking here uh, over the next series of topics about advanced polymers. We're not talking about engineering plastics such as polyethylene, uh, which are not very useful typically for biomedical applications. We're going to be talking about advanced polymers which have features that are very applicable to biomedical type applications. Uh, and in order to kind of get into that, we have to get a basic feel for what a polymer is to start with. Uh, as we go through this video series, um, I'm going to be working with you to learn even more about the marvels of polymer chemistry and what they can do for you and your lab. Thank you.